were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Acts chapter 2 verses 44 to 45 and Acts chapter 4 verses 32 to 35. Dear friends, you may be wondering what is the purpose of suddenly serving these words from the Holy Bible. Look friends, the intention is very simple, a nice attempt to make you think a little about the truth. Today our topic is Christian Communism. We will now try to understand what is this Christian Communism and what do these views of philosophy want to tell us. So let's get started. Let's get started. Various authors including Thomas Wharton Collins, Jose Porfirio Miranda and Jose Miguez Bonino describe biblical sources supporting a common poverty society. Miranda said, I am not introducing the Bible to Marx. I only wish to understand what the Bible says. We want to take the Bible seriously. Christian communism does not depend merely on the principles of the early apostles. And Christian communist argues that anti-capitalist ideals are deeply rooted in the Christian faith. While modern capitalism had not yet formed in the time of Jesus, his message was overwhelmingly against the love of money and greed, and in support of the poor, Christian communists see the principles of Christ as staunchly anti-capitalist in nature. Capitalism is heavily based in the collection of usury, which was condemned for centuries by the church based in numerous scriptures. Christian opposition to the emergence of such an interest-based system largely delayed capitalist development and capitalism did not gather popular support until John Kelvin endorsed capitalist practice from a religious perspective. Among those historians who support the Christian communist view, Montero offers anthropological evidence that the practices recounted in Acts chapter 4 verses 32 to 35 were historical and were practiced widely and taken seriously during at least the first two centuries of Christianity. Other biblical evidence of anti-capitalistic belief systems include Matthew chapter 6 verses 24 which said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The slogan, is according to his abilities, has biblical origins. Acts chapter 11 verses 29 states, Then the disciples, every man, according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren who is dwelt in Judea. Additionally, the praise to ease according to his needs has a biblical basis in Acts chapter 4 verses 35, who is says to the emissaries to distribute to ease according to his need. Christian Communism is a theological view that the teachings of Jesus compel Christians to support religious communism. Many Christian communists argue that evidence from the Bible suggests that the first Christians, including the apostles in the New Testament, established their own small communist society in the years following Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Christian communist typically regard biblical text in Acts 2 and Acts 4 as evidence that the first Christian lived in a communist society. Friends, historians generally confirm the view that a form of communism was taught by Jesus and practiced by the apostles. Friends, I hope this video will give some satisfaction to your queries. Thank you all, stay healthy everyone. And please don't forget to like, comment, share if you enjoyed this video. And also subscribe our channel Vivek Dash Express. Bye, see you soon.